Of course, the world is watching, so let's bring in Chief Foreign Affairs Correspondent and Face the Nation moderator Margaret Brennan. She joins us now. Margaret, good morning. The president seemed to spend a portion of his speech yesterday arguing to Americans that there is value in the U.S. engaging more with the world. So let's get into the details a little bit. What stood out to you about the president's message on foreign policy? Well, good morning to you, Tony. That phrase, relentless diplomacy, stood out because the administration isn't practicing relentless diplomacy at the moment. So this is very aspirational. U.N. addresses often are, but this seemed to gloss over some of the complexities General. that the Biden administration is facing. Uh, their diplomatic overtures to broker a transition of power in Afghanistan, for example, fell apart, and allies said they weren't even fully consulted. The diplomacy with Iran over its nuclear program is stalling, and these attempts to broker a climate deal with China have largely failed. That's not my analysis. That is what the Secretary General of the United Nations said on Sunday. So this has been a really tough start for the uh, diplomacy here. And uh, the president made clear he has a very strong aversion to military force and wants to try to avoid conflict with China. So the diplomacy may be more focused there. Yeah, a lot of world leaders have criticized the uh, American pullout from Afghanistan, at least the chaos that remained. You spoke recently to President Erdogan of Turkey, who's facing an Afghan refugee crisis at his borders. What did he tell you? This was an exclusive interview, and Erdogan came with a message that he is very frustrated to inherit the consequences of U.S. action abroad, including the chaotic withdrawal from Afghanistan. His country has the most refugees in the world, and now they have a, a wave of Afghans headed towards their border. I asked him what should be done. You said last month Turkey has no duty, responsibility, or obligation to be a refugee warehouse. Whose obligation is it? Is it America's obligation to take in these refugees? Right now, the United States uh, failed to meet its obligations. We have more than 300,000 Afghan refugees, and we will no longer be able to afford to welcome any more Afghan refugees in Turkey. Does the U.S. need to do more? Of course, the United States should do a lot and should invest a lot because the United States has been there for the last 20 years, but why? Why? First, these questions should be answered by the United States. Should the U.S. do more, Margaret? And he, he hedged a little bit in his answer. He didn't, didn't come out with a clear yes. What did you make of it? Well, it, further on in the interview, he, he did say, you know, more needs to be done here. And, and really, he's looking for some support from the rest of the international community. But he's building a wall, literally, to try to keep Afghan refugees out at the moment. But the pressure here is back on the administration, which has up the number of refugees it will accept to this goal of 125,000. Uh, but there is frustration from those in the neighborhood that they have been left to pick up the pieces, and they would like uh, something more from the United States. I suspect that means more financial aid and more support when it comes to uh, dealing with the fallout from the withdrawal in Afghanistan. So this is something we're going to watch. Turkey is also one of the uh, few countries that is being turned to by the United States to be a lifeline to the Taliban and perhaps help uh, keep an idea of how to stabilize the country through them. Yeah, indeed. Margaret, thank you very much. And this Sunday on Face the Nation, you'll be able to see more of Margaret's interview with Turkey's President Erdogan as they discuss human rights and America's role on the world stage during the Biden presidency.